All right, we just finished up Rachel's classroom. She has a K second uh, classroom, all cross category classroom, self contained room. I'll do another span out, but I'm going to take have a Debbie do the little explanation of the areas. All right, Debbie, take Hi. it away. So this is the door where the children would be coming in every day. And so this is the entrance space. Um, by the entrance space, there is a desk where children will transition. Um, they will move their names. Um, she has their names on rocks, and so they're going to move their names from not at school to at school. Um, there may also be a sign-in so they can be practicing writing as they indicate that they're here at school. This is the cubbies. This is um, uh, um, the number of children um, is probably around 10 and may go up to about 15, but she has plenty of cubbies here, as well as areas they have change of clothes for all the children. When the children come in, they'll put their backpacks in here, but they also take out their lunches that they bring, and they have space to bring it there. This is one of those really lucky classrooms where they have a bathroom right in the class. Well, because of also it's a self-contained classroom, the accessibility of being able to get their change of clothes was important, so we had to take that into consideration. Right. Yes, um, and next to that area, we're moving into our science and sensory area. Here is a water table and um, just yesterday or this morning the teacher made this great contraption for funnels. I think the children had such a, a wonderful time using this. This, um, it ended up that we were backing the water table up to the teacher's desk. And so of course there was a concern about water. So on this, which was a chart hanger, she's going to put a clear um, shower curtain so that it doesn't block the view. If um, we, were, we were kidding, the principal was in here, um, she's gonna be able to come and do observations. But also, instead of having this blocked high up view, which there would be supervision issues, um, they're able to see, see right straight through there. And underneath there will be a bin that will have the kinds of things that they can use in the water table. One of the things that we frequently are reminding people is not to have everything in the water table, but accessible so children can use and choose what they're wanting to do. One of the things that the teacher in this room mentioned is how important it is to have water in this classroom that's really soothing to many of the children. She just got this awesome light table, and I love this cactus skeleton that's on the top of it. Um, and she ha will have different things out for them to explore um, with some shelving um, across there as well. These, um, uh, which she has throughout the room, these are magnetic as well as chalkboards, and she has these uh, baskets that can be attached. So she'll be putting books that are related to each of the areas in those. There's also a small writing area where there will be science journals and pencils and markers, things like that, which some of which you can see over here. She started having um, some shelving for that. The other part of the science area comes over to here and um, she's got some live plants, some incredible insects to look at this moth. You have to get, look at this moth. It's really neat. She actually found that one yesterday. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, Perfect. really incredible. And then there are some other things to be looking at and investigating on this shelf, which um, is shared with the math area. So the balance is on there, measuring things that may also be there. There will be tools that can be used in either of the air areas. Um, I think the use of her plants just really softens this and adds a lot to the way that it looks. Here she has her safe spot, the beginning of her safe spot. In order to make this feel cozier, she is going to put some material from here, coming on down to here. There will be some books in the bookshelf. She's got some sensory bottles, some squidget sort of things, books that the children can use. One of the things which I haven't seen very often in this area, and I think it's a great idea, is she has some earphones for children who are wanting to cut out some of the noise that they're hearing in the classroom. The science area and this um, uh, safe spot then um, is uh, next to the beginning of the dramatic play area and she has a multi-room dramatic play area. So here we have dress up clothes. She's going to put a full length mirror here so the children can dress up and look at themselves. Um, and she's gonna add some shoes and things like that. There are even some books on this bookshelf that are about clothing and about being in the house. 
And then she's got this lovely, lovely a dramatic play area, the beginnings of this. What a, look at this great chair, a great cozy chair that's sort of so inviting, as well as some soft lighting on the on end table there, a little rocking chair, a place for eating meals. Um, she has a dog, she does have a pet, and we were kidding around, so that's that dog doing on the furniture. <laughs> <laughs> um, also in this area, there is a dollhouse, and underneath it, there's, um, areas where she can put um, things that can be added to the dollhouse so that the children always have an empty dollhouse that they can create and use it the way they want to. There's dolls, there's doll furniture. One of the things I think is really fun in the maker space is sometimes children make things or they can use blocks and bring them here and say, oh, this is going to be the bed or the chair or whatever they think that it might be. But you can also just add um, odds and ends that they can create things that they call furniture. She's got some shelving here that she'll be able to add things to, some baby dolls. One of the things we always encourage is that the baby dolls are on the shelves so that when they want to play with them, they get the babies and put them in the chair or put them in the bed and can actually do things with them. Um, as I said before, this, the, this is the other side now of the shelving we saw. So science is on the other side of that shelving. This is Mac, and she um, took off the, uh, the doors to this cabinet and all of a sudden have all this extra kinds of shelving. There's going to be map and manipulatives here, so there'll be puzzles as well as counting things, different objects to use in mathematics. This then moves into the block area, which is so nice to have the block area next to the math area. They're so closely related. She has um, a number of blocks that we haven't gone through and put out, out on the shelves yet, but they are labeled and there's places for all the different blocks, which will help facilitate children during their cleanup time. These, remember I said this was a, a magnetic board. She's got these great whiteboards that are magnetic so children can draw their plans, their blueprints. Um, there's also another basket for books. There might be books on bridges or buildings whatever might be fitting into there at the time, as well as a shelf for some manipulatives. This shelf, you'll notice, has backing on some of the shelves. Other the shelves don't. So, on the area that is on the other side of the block area is her maker space. On these ones that are open, she is gonna put backing um, on this side so that there can be tools and things for the children to use for deconstruction, for gluing, for building things on this side as well. She also has this really nice shelving unit, which um, there'll be curtains over the first couple of uh, levels, but then the bottom three levels will be things that children can be using over here on, in the maker space. This then moves into the uh, whole group area, and she's got some shelving. This area here, they're going to be able to uh, make books, there's staplers, there'll be a hole punchers, tape, uh, as well as writing tools here. And the children can uh, write here, make books. This is going to be a, a word wall, uh, and it'll be very convenient for the children. Uh, and there may be a way to actually take the words off and take them down to be able to write those. She's got the beginning. This is a lovely, authentic calendar that she has the beginning of. This is a smart board that is sometimes used. And so if necessary, the children can step up on this in order to do some things on the smart board, but she's actually asking that it be lowered to make it more convenient and more at their level. Uh, this area down here is going to be used for the, the schedule of the day. And she's got more shelving here, so these might be other things that add to uh, there might be books here, there may be books that, and manipulatives that help children to retell. So maybe if there's the story of the three little pigs, there might be some stuffed little um, animals of, of pigs in this so that they can use those and be prompted to retell stories. There's also, um, well, let me go to this table first. I want to talk about the rug because I might get asked about Oh, that. okay. So I think Rachel said she was yes, in the I'm process right. of getting a... a a, oval rug an oval rug so or just circle. so you guys know we're, we just put the mat down to save a space to save a space yeah. and to show to account for that space mm -hmm. for the large group yeah and then um, behind that this is remember in the literacy um, area the publishing area here is a place for making cards or notes there's envelopes um, there is some writing tools here 
and then she's going to put the words that will help children to write things that might say we miss you or happy birthday, thank you, those kinds of things to help them do that. Alongside here she has all these letters that are sort of, I think these are Scrabble letters? Yes. Is that right? Um, as well as she has the little stands that the Scrabble letters go on, so children will be creating words with that. This table, um, this low table, is um, uh, that transition from literacy into art. And so um, both things may be happening here. There will be the tools of, of writing and drawing on the shelving here that can be used, um, as well as, as things up here. Um, and this area is, it's, it was so interesting because around here, she had this large backing to this shelf. She's going to, in the beginning anyway, first of all, she's going to cover this, but then she's going to put contact paper across the whole thing with the sticky side pointing out so the children can very easily be creating a, uh, a, a collage uh, by just taking whatever she has. They might be the pom poms or paper that they've torn or, or magazine pictures and then just place them on here. Uh, and then, and this is here as a reminder that there will be shelving here as well. Again, it could be books, it could be materials that they're going to use. The art area, she has a, an easel and next to the easel she's, this is again, these are place markers. She's going to have the, the pumps, these were soap pumps, so she's going to put paint in there. Um, the three primary colors and underneath here there are containers that children can put paint into. There's also a palette if they want to use a palette and put paint on that as well as some brushes. There's paper so they can help themselves and be able to um, make their, their masterpieces on here. Also there's going to be a string that goes across there with clothes pins so that the children after they have finished doing their painting can hang up their drawings and you might want to put something plastic underneath there just to catch all the, the dripping of the paint. Um, there is going to be underneath where I'll open up those mm -hmm. and this there'll be shelving for art stuff. So there might be watercolors yeah. under there, there may be other kinds of things. Play-Doh would be great to have under there and some things to use with Play-Doh that they could do on that table. Also, the children all bring water bottles and periodically they need to be washed. So one of the jobs in this class is going to be the person who washes those bottles. And they uh, have the things here. There is a dish drainer, which the children will be able to bring out, wash these dishes and put them there to, to uh, dry. So we just think it was uh, really turned out to have all the areas that, that are gonna be delightful for the children to have when they start school. Do you have? Any reflections, Rachel? I'm really excited. I love it, and I can't wait for the kids to see it. Yeah. Yay! I have some returning students that are going to be very excited. Very cool. I'm going to do another little span. And of course, as always, the rooms are never 100% complete. Rachel has to go in and put in the details, the additional materials, but the foundation is pretty much done. And then we'll see how it works with her um, group of kids. Thank you, Rachel.